In today's video, we're going to be comparing the Newfoundland and the Flat-Coated Retriever. Both of these wonderful breeds excel in their line of work and make wonderful pets for families with children. Let's see how they compare head to head. Welcome back to the Fenrir Newfoundland Show. If this is your first time here, my name's Franny and I'm a certified canine leader here at FenrirCanineLeaders.com. This channel is dedicated to helping you learn everything you could possibly want to know about Newfoundlands, then how to become high level canine leaders that can raise perfect Newfoundlands. So if you're a lifelong Newfoundland lover, thinking about getting one or just started your journey with your new Newfoundland, then this channel is for you. So make sure you hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell so you never miss a future Newfoundland video. So let's dive into today's video and we'll take a look at the main differences between these two breeds. Let's dig right into each breed's history and get a better look at how our cherished modern canines were developed. You could guess by the name where the Newfoundland originated. These dogs came about by crossing large breeds such as the St. Bernard and the English Mastiff with the native St. John's Water Dog. This resulted in two different types of Newfoundlands. The Greater Newfoundland which was known to be larger and was used to pull carts and equipment while the Lesser Newfoundland was used to help fishermen pull their nets. It wasn't until the 1800s that the Newfoundland of today really came about and in 1896 a Newfoundland club was established. Today they've made a comeback as family dogs due to their gentle nature. The flat-coated retriever originated in England and was bred as a gamekeeper's dog. They're said to descend from the now extinct St John's water dog, just like the Newfoundland, but it remains unverified. After being introduced to the US, these dogs became increasingly popular as gun dogs, but their popularity didn't last long as it was overshadowed by the Golden Retriever, and by the end of World War II, so few remained that the breed's future was uncertain. However, in the 1960s, careful breeding brought the dogs back from the brink of extinction. Today, they're kept as companions and used in sports and confirmation showing. Moving along to appearance, you'll notice these dogs look nothing alike. They both have floppy ears and a longer coat, but that's about it. Hey guys, if you want perfect puppies, like all my mates here are, and you're interested in how it is that as a professional canine behaviourist I go about raising and training perfect puppies, I have a completely free course that I think you might be interested in called The Principles to the Perfect Puppy. There'll be a link down in the description box below. It is completely free of charge and you can go and check it out right now, so I can't wait to see you over there. The Newfoundland is a huge breed that stands between 63 and 74 centimetres tall and weighs between 54 and 68 kilograms. The flat-coated retriever isn't nearly as large. They range only from 56 to 61 centimetres in height and weigh between 25 and 36 kilograms. Even the largest flat-coated retriever is smaller than the smallest Newfoundland. Despite being much different in size, they have similar needs in the grooming department. Because both have a long coat, they will need regular brushing. Both breeds need to be brushed every day to ensure coat health and keep mats and tangles from developing. It is even advised that they get professionally groomed two or three times a year to help keep up with their high demand coats. This moves us into trainability for each breed. Newfoundlands are incredibly intelligent dogs and take very well to training. Due to their large size, it's really important to start training as early as possible. They need to learn boundaries as puppies and socialization is always important. Though Newfoundlands normally do well around other dogs, these dogs form close bonds with their family and will love spending time playing and training. They also do extremely well with children and training can be a wonderful bonding experience between them and older children. Despite this breed's size, they're extremely sensitive and don't do well with harsh punishments. They need a calm, consistent leader and a lot of positive reinforcement. Flat-coated retrievers are also extremely intelligent, but you wouldn't expect anything less from a breed descending from the Border Collie. Though they can be strong-willed and have a mind of their own at times, they need a calm, consistent leader to understand their needs and put them on the right path. This is partially due to the fact that they mature more slowly than other breeds. This naughty behaviour can make new owners want to rush training and correct behaviour, but it's important to keep the flat-coated retriever time to mature into a proper adult, so it's very important to never rush their training. Much like the Newfoundland, they don't do well with harsh correction or heavy-handed methods. Both are wonderful dogs that love to be with their people and love to please. The Newfoundland is great with children of all ages, though due to their size, it's best to supervise any playtime with smaller children. 
Accidents can happen though and are less likely to with proper training. Being working dogs they need a lot of physical and mental exercise but will become couch potatoes if left to their own devices. This may make them slightly more ideal in a home environment, paired with the fact that they do well with other dogs, people and even cats as long as they were raised around them. Much like the Newfoundland, the flat-coated retriever gets on well with children, other dogs and cats as long as they were raised around them. Though they tend to take after their collie ancestors and are all go, go, go. That's no problem for someone with an active lifestyle, though others may find them hard to keep up with. No matter which dog a family picks, they'll have a wonderful and active companion for themselves and their children. Though the Newfoundland certainly needs more space, so that's definitely something to consider when choosing one as a canine companion. I hope you've enjoyed today's video, if so please make sure you hit that like button, get involved in the comment section down below and don't forget that if you are new here make sure you subscribe as we have two dedicated Newfoundland videos coming here every week. So I can't wait to talk to you again on the next episode of the Fenrir Newfoundland Show.